Alright, so we're back with the Miyuki Mile. Thank you for joining me. I am Miki Takara, and today we're going to be talking about the NFL Lockout, Part 2 of the NFL Lockout, uh, and basically what it means, at least from the way I see it. You, you might actually see it completely differently, but th this is at least how I see it. Now, the first problem that I see is the NFL PA no longer existing. You see... The whole Brady v. NFL is the 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 NFL's side is that the uh, the union dissolved to uh, as sort of a leverage move to give the players a chance to uh, to litigate against the NFL. And what people might not know is there were several players before these contract talks uh, before these con this contract expired said and I quote when the NFL union dissolves wait a second when the union dissolves Samari Roll said that Scott Fujita said that when the NFL dissolves Oh, by the way, need I remind you that they've been saying that since before these, uh, the contract expired. When the NFL union dissolves. Which means it was a move that was planned from the very beginning. So, I would actually say legally, the, uh, the courts have an obligation to keep this lockout on. Because it was said in the media... When the union dissolves, which means it was planned. It's a leverage move. That's the problem I have with the NFL uh, PA dissolving. And sure, they're not, as a dissolved union, they are not allowed legally to represent the NFL players. But what's to say they're not in the background pulling the strings? I can almost guarantee you. The union is pulling the strings on the player contract talks. Another problem I have with this is neither side really feels like they need their fans. If they did, we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't be here right now. All right, it's been two years since the owners voted to void the contract. Again, another big problem, and I'll get in on that in just a little bit. It's been two years since the owners voted to void this contract. They can't come up with something in two years? In 2009, I, uh, I went through, personally, uh, contract talks of my own. Uh, you see, the company that I work for is, uh, the, the workers are represented by the Union of Food and Commercial Workers uh, Union. Uh, United, food, uh, United Food and Commercials, Commercial Workers Union. And Sure, those contract talks almost led to a strike. And it would have been a really big strike because of the economy. You have one side that holds all the power. The other side really needed, uh, really needed to uh, accept this contract. And that really pissed off a few people in the UFCW. We ended up getting it sorted out in about six months. You can't honestly expect me to believe a billion dollar a year corporation can't figure it out in two years. What? So neither the NFL nor the NFL PA really feel like they need their fans. Otherwise, we would have figured it out already. They would have figured it out already. Now, during a conference call uh, to Tennessee Titans fans, Roger Goodell uh, reiterated that they needed to take it out of the courthouse and into the negotiation table. Here's the problem with that. All sides involved are saying that. Neither side is taking steps to do so. And another reason I say the NFL doesn't feel like they need their fans is because, sure, Recent negotiations may end up, uh, may, may be progressive. But here's the thing. We've heard that half a dozen times. Allow us in, uh, in the negotiations to see what the fuck is going on. And on top of that, these negotiations up until 
this past week where they met three days in a row, whoop the fucking do three days in a row in Chicago, they met once per month. That's not gonna. Uh, that's not gonna accomplish anything. And Roger Goodell said, "Take it back to the negotiation table." But not once did he ever grab the bull by the horns. Not once did he ever petition the courts to accelerate these negotiations out of the courthouse and into the in the uh, at the negotiation table. Yeah, way to go, Goodell. Way to, uh, way to emphasize your point. Way to get these negotiations moving. Hopefully, recent events have really, uh, really showed Roger Goodell that he needs the fans. Now, don't, don't think that just because I'm bashing Roger Goodell here that the players are off the hook. Not by a long shot. Actually, it's because of the recent... Uh, activities of the players and just current players that I'm actually saying the players are at fault in this. Why? Because, okay, Roger Goodell is showing that he feels he, like he doesn't need the fans. He's a multi-billion dollar a year uh, commission, uh, uh, organization. The NFL is a multi-billion dollar a year organization. But the players... Look at their activities. They've been alienating fans wherever the fuck they go. We're talking about big names. All right. Terrell Owens. Randy Moss. Anquan Bolden. Let's see. Willis McGahee. These are all current players that have alienated their fans. Not just where they left but where they played. So apparently, the NFL players don't feel like they need their fans. So, despite the fact that I'm a diehard football fan considering this, I'm actually saying I hope this lockout continues. I hope that they get it through their thick fucking skull that they need their fans. I hope that this season is in fact canceled. Because then neither side is going to get paid for an entire fucking year. Then maybe, just maybe, they'll get, uh, they'll get it through the thick fucking skull and say, Okay, we need to sit, to sit our asses down in these, uh, in these chairs and figure something out. I'm a diehard football fan. I don't want to see it canceled. But I think it's the best move for both sides. Because then it'll make them realize that they do need their fans. It'll make them realize that they aren't the NFL. We are. The only organization that has it right, as much as it pains me to say it's not the Buffalo Bills, is the Green Bay Packers. Because they are a publicly owned entity. Seriously, they're trading on the stock market. The Green Bay Packers are the only team that gets it right. They realize they need their fans, so much so that they let their fans have partial ownership. Why can't the rest of the NFL figure this out? I mean, even if they don't want to let their, let their fans have partial ownership of their team, the fact of the matter is moves are, based, made, uh, moves are made based on the fan base. I mean, look at Josh McDaniels. The Bronco fans spoke. And the Broncos listened. Why can't the rest of the NFL do that? Roger Goodell, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Scott Fujita, fuck you all in the fucking ass! Figure this out! As a football fan, what's going on between you all is pissing me clean the fuck off. I hope this season gets canceled. I hope you guys have to use replacement players. Because maybe then you'll figure it out. So now that that's done, come here next on the Mickey Mile. 
if there's no big news, we're going to be talking talking about something else. You know, I, I haven't figured that part out yet. I haven't uh, got that far ahead. But coming up next, we're going to be listening to Candid Friend, a remix by Golden City Factory. This is the theme song to the Nitori character from Toho. I think it's Toho 11. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that one, but that's what's coming up next. You're listening to the Mickey Mile. <laughs> 